In the heart of the Ottoman Empire, one of the most extraordinary stories of ambition and intrigue unfolded, a story that would change the course of history. Born as a slave, she rose to be one of the most powerful women of the 16th century, influencing politics, shaping an empire, and redefining the role of women in a world dominated by men. This is the tale of Hurum Sultan. Hurum Sultan, originally known as Roxolana, was born around 1502 in Ruthenia, present-day Ukraine. Her early life remains a mystery, but what little we know is a tragic story. She was the daughter of a priest, but her life changed dramatically when Crimean Tatars raided her village. Taken captive, she was thrust into the brutal world of slavery, eventually sold into the Ottoman Empire's thriving slave trade. At this point, she was just one among thousands, seemingly destined for obscurity. When Roxolana arrived in Istanbul, she entered the palace of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. She became part of the Sultan's harem, a place where enslaved women were trained in the arts, languages, and skills necessary to entertain and serve the royal family. Here, Roxolana caught the eye of Sultan Suleiman, the ruler of the vast Ottoman Empire. Unlike most other harem members, her personality radiated confidence, intelligence, and humor. She was given the name Hurum, which means joyful one, as she was known to bring laughter and happiness to those around her. Hurum's relationship with Sultan Suleiman was unlike any other. While most sultans kept a distance from the women in the harem, Hurum and Suleiman formed a deep emotional bond. Suleiman found in her a partner, someone who could match his intellect, challenge his ideas, and offer a companionship that went beyond the usual harem dynamics. Hurum's cleverness and charm soon set her apart from other concubines, sparking jealousy and intrigue within the palace. But it wasn't just her charm that enchanted Suleiman. Hurum was ambitious and intelligent, using her wit to become a trusted advisor. Their letters, filled with poetry and affection, are some of the few surviving correspondences between an Ottoman sultan and a concubine. She was the first woman to break through the barriers of the imperial harem, and Suleiman's affection for her grew with each passing day. For the first time, a sultan was in love, openly showing his emotions. Hurum bore several children, including the future Sultan Selim II. Traditionally, a concubine would bear one son and then be moved aside to make room for the next, but Hurum defied this tradition. She secured her position by bearing multiple children, a feat that gave her power and influence within the palace walls. Through these births, Kurum established a lasting legacy in the Ottoman dynasty, strengthening her ties to the throne and securing her place in history. However, her rise to power came with its costs. Other women in the harem envied her influence over Suleiman, especially Mahadevran, Suleiman's first consort and the mother of his eldest son, Mustafa. Hurum and Mahadevran became bitter rivals. Their feud became notorious, and it led to increasing tension within the palace. Mahadevran, who once held a prominent place in the harem, saw her influence decline as Hurum's rose. In a stunning break from Ottoman tradition, Suleiman made Hurum his legal wife. Ottoman sultans typically did not marry, especially not a concubine. This act shocked the empire and enraged the political elite. Hurum was now more than just a favored concubine, she was the sultan's legitimate wife and bore the title of Hasiki Sultan, or chief consort. With this title, she gained a position of official influence in court affairs, marking the beginning of an unprecedented era. Marriage to the Sultan allowed Hurum to transcend the conventional role of a harem woman. She now had access to power and wealth, which she wielded to her advantage. Unlike previous harem women who were isolated from political affairs, Hurum became actively involved in the governance of the empire. She advised Suleiman on diplomatic matters and, through her influence, gained allies among the imperial council. By securing her role as the first married consort of a reigning sultan, Hurum reshaped the Ottoman court. Hurum's new status unleashed a wave of political intrigue within the empire. Some ministers, fearing her influence, accused her of manipulating Suleiman and corrupting his judgment. 
They called her a witch and the Sultan's curse. Her influence over Suleiman was viewed with suspicion, and the court became divided between those who supported her and those who viewed her as a dangerous threat. As Hurum's position grew, she became involved in a significant political rivalry with Grand Vizier Ibrahim Pasha, one of Suleiman's closest friends and advisors. Ibrahim held immense influence over Suleiman, and his power was almost second only to the Sultan's. Yet Hurum saw Ibrahim as an obstacle, someone who could potentially undermine her position and that of her children. Many suspect that Hurum, aware of Ibrahim's ambition, began to plant seeds of doubt in Suleiman's mind, leading the Sultan to question Ibrahim's loyalty. In time, Ibrahim's friendship with Suleiman turned to mistrust. Accusations of disloyalty and ambition tainted his image, and Suleiman began distancing himself from his former friend. This rivalry reached its tragic conclusion when, in 1536, Ibrahim was executed on Suleiman's orders. While the exact details remain shrouded in mystery, many historians believe Hurum played a role in his downfall, a maneuver to eliminate a threat and secure her position further. With her newfound influence, Hurum devoted herself to charitable works, further cementing her image in the public eye. She became a patron of architecture, commissioning numerous buildings across the empire. Her most famous project was the Hasiki Sultan Complex in Istanbul, a grand mosque and social welfare complex that provided aid to the poor. She also funded schools, hospitals, and soup kitchens, using her wealth to build a legacy beyond the palace walls. Hurum's charitable works were part of a carefully constructed image. By positioning herself as a benefactor, she softened her image among the people, countering the negative rumors that surrounded her in the palace. Her charitable contributions elevated her reputation, showcasing her as a compassionate and generous figure. These acts were not merely personal projects but were a strategic move to gain the public's favor. Hurum Sultan's journey from an enslaved girl to the Sultan's beloved consort was unprecedented, but her story was far from over. As she rose in power, the stakes grew higher, and the intrigues of palace life became even more complex. Hurum's influence would eventually extend to her children, creating a legacy that would change the Ottoman Empire forever. With the deaths of rivals and her increasing influence over Suleiman, Hurum turned her focus toward securing her children's futures. Her main concern was ensuring that one of her sons would inherit the throne, a position traditionally reserved for the eldest son, Mustafa, the son of Mahadevran. Mustafa, a popular and well-regarded figure among the army and people, posed the greatest threat to Hurum's ambitions for her children. Hurum's ultimate goal was to see her son, Selim, ascend as the next sultan. She knew the Ottoman Empire's succession system was brutal, the struggle for the throne often ended in fratricide, with rival sons fighting to secure their claim. If Mustafa were to become sultan, her son's lives would be at risk. To eliminate Mustafa as a threat, Hurum allegedly orchestrated a campaign to convince Suleiman that Mustafa harbored ambitions of overthrowing him. Rumors began to circulate around the court, likely fueled by Hurum's allies, suggesting that Mustafa was conspiring against Suleiman. Over time, the Sultan's trust in his eldest son eroded. In 1553, Suleiman summoned Mustafa to his camp in Konya, a summons that would lead to a heartbreaking confrontation. Mustafa entered his father's tent, unaware that it was a trap. On Suleiman's command, Mustafa was strangled by his father's guards, ending the life of a beloved prince. This act shocked the empire, casting a shadow over Suleiman's rule. Though Hurum's direct involvement has never been proven, many historians believe her ambition and influence played a significant role in Mustafa's tragic fate. The death of Mustafa paved the way for her sons to have a clearer path to the throne. Yet, it also made Hurum more despised than ever by those loyal to Mustafa, casting her as a manipulative figure willing to go to any length for power. With Mustafa gone, Hurum's son, Selim, became the strongest contender to succeed Suleiman. However, Selim was not the natural choice for many in the empire. 
Unlike his father, Salim was not known for his military prowess or intellect. His interests leaned more toward pleasures of the court, and many in the empire doubted his ability to rule. Purim, knowing this, maneuvered carefully. She continued to support Salim and position him as the rightful successor, despite his lack of qualifications compared to Mustafa. Through her influence, she shaped Salim's path to the throne, advising him on alliances and political maneuvers that would secure his place as the next sultan. Purim's other sons, Bayezid and Sihanger, also found themselves embroiled in the complex politics of succession. Sihanger, born with a deformity, was loved dearly by his mother but was not seen as a viable heir. Bayezid, however, possessed a strong spirit and a love for battle. Yet, despite his potential, the fierce competition for power eventually strained the bonds between Hiram's own sons, leading to tragic consequences that would haunt her legacy. Beyond palace politics, Hiram's influence extended into the public sphere. Known for her charitable works, she continued to fund monumental projects, leaving a visible mark on Ottoman architecture. In addition to the Hasiki Sultan complex, she commissioned a mosque, schools, and hospitals throughout Istanbul and Jerusalem, many of which still stand today. These projects not only showcased her piety and generosity but were also a political strategy to gain the loyalty of the people. Hiram's public image, however, remained controversial. Her enemies within the court saw her charity as a smokescreen for her darker ambitions. Stories spread that she practiced witchcraft or used charms to bewitch Suleiman, rumors likely fueled by jealousy and mistrust. These accusations painted her as a manipulative and dangerous woman, but Hiram's actions spoke to a different reality. She aimed to build a legacy of benevolence and faithfulness to the Ottoman Empire, an image that competed with the darker rumors surrounding her. As Suleiman aged, the issue of succession grew more pressing, igniting a bitter rivalry between Hiram's sons, Selim and Bayezid. While Selim was Hiram's preferred choice, Bayezid's ambition threatened to disrupt her carefully laid plans. The rivalry between the brothers escalated to open conflict, and Hiram's health began to decline, weakening her ability to mediate the dispute. In 1559, the brothers engaged in a fierce battle for the throne. Although Bayezid had support from various factions within the empire, Salim ultimately emerged victorious with his mother's unwavering support and the Sultan's backing. Bayezid fled to Persia but was eventually captured and executed. Hiram's hopes for a peaceful succession were shattered as her family was torn apart by ambition and violence. The conflicts between her sons marked a painful chapter in her life, casting a shadow over her accomplishments. Hiram's final years were marked by both satisfaction and sorrow. She had achieved more than any woman in Ottoman history, securing her place as a powerful figure in the empire. Yet, the personal losses and betrayals she faced weighed heavily on her. Despite her ambition, she reportedly loved her family deeply and grieved over the deaths of Mustafa, Bayezid, and her other children. In 1558, Hiram Sultan passed away, leaving behind a complicated legacy. Her death marked the end of an era in the Ottoman court. Suleiman, who had loved her passionately and stood by her side through countless intrigues, reportedly grieved deeply. He buried her in a grand mausoleum next to his own, a rare honor that underscored the profound bond they shared. Hiram's influence extended beyond her death, as her legacy continued through her surviving son, Selim, who eventually became Sultan Selim II. Hiram's legacy reshaped the Ottoman Empire in ways that echoed for generations. She had redefined the role of women in the imperial court, setting a precedent that other sultans' mothers and consorts would follow. Her life marked the beginning of the so-called Sultanate of Women, an era in which women held unprecedented power in the Ottoman political sphere. Hiram had broken the traditional limits imposed on women in the harem, proving that intelligence, ambition, and resilience could create a path to power. Her story was a catalyst for change, influencing not only the Ottoman Empire's history but also the perceptions of women in power. 
Although historians continue to debate her role in Mustafa's death and the internal conflicts that plagued Suleiman's reign, Hurram remains an iconic figure. Her life embodies both the light and the shadow of ambition, her actions a testament to the fierce survival instincts that defined her journey from a slave to a queen. Hurram Sultan's remarkable rise and the profound impact she left behind transformed the Ottoman court, forever changing the role of women in the empire. The structures she funded, the laws she influenced, and the alliances she forged remain as testimony to a woman whose life defied the constraints of her time. Her story endures as a reminder of the complex nature of power, love, and ambition, securing Hurram Sultan's place as one of the most fascinating figures in Ottoman history.